I'm planning to finish a game in 24 hours. Maybe that was a little too aggressive. Let me explain. It's not the one that I've been working on. I am still working on my RPG game on the back burner, but I wanted to take a small creative detour. Main reason for that is because my friend is visiting from out of town and I'm supposed to have a lunch tomorrow and I wanted to have something that he can play test. And it's already, what, 7 p.m. here. Um, so I don't have that much time. I'm not at all confident, so we'll see. But I don't know. I think I think this could be something interesting. Uh, although hindsight, I should plan this probably before. But you know, it's all about the theme of my life right now is all about spontaneity. So I'm gonna go with it. I'm pretty hopeful. I should probably be pretty bang on with this, right? Yeah, what could go wrong? All right, I had this idea for a while now. You know, there are a lot of reaction based games out there. You know, all the competitive games are reaction based, a shooter, RTS, action RPG, but I am not kind of satisfied with that because, you know, depending on your physical ability, sometimes your actual ability to grow is capped. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a value in showcasing your actual physical prowess. I was thinking, how can I make it so that you can feel the kind of strategic mind and strategic decisions you make when playing a reaction game for those who does not have high reaction. I want them to still feel the strategy and thinking that goes behind reaction type of game without having to actually rely on their own reaction. So I had some thoughts on that. That's what I'm going to work on. Um, yeah, it's not going as well as I thought it would. Um, it is 9.27. It's only been two hours, but I decided that because of the nature of the kind of strategic combat system that I was thinking of, it would be great if I hop onto isometric tile. And funny thing is, I've never worked with tiles in uh, Godot, and I thought I could just do it. But uh, it's taking a bit of a research and uh, rejiggering. So I'm hoping that I don't have to eat away into my sleep time. But uh, yeah. Nope. Okay, well, I mean, let's see. I guess it's just I'll go straight for it. <clears throat> so it turns out 17 hours weren't quite enough. Um, I stayed up all night. Well, not all night. I stayed up good enough time to work on it. And then I thought, you know what? I, I got to a pretty good place. I got the graphical asset to use for this basic combat system. I got the understanding of how the asymmetric tile set works. And then in the morning, I was working on it. And then I was just struggling with the movement. Um, and there was some nuance to it. Like, it shouldn't be that difficult. But, you know, before you know it, Decided to meet the friend an hour earlier because I got hungry. We had a great time. It was a great food. It was delicious. But there was no playable game for him to try. It's okay. It's okay. Um, you know what? I'm excited about the game idea and the design enough that I'm just going to continue it. And so instead of it being a 17-hour scrappy game project, it'll be a... Uh, I'm going to finish a game in one week. Making good progress. Uh, here we go. So I made pretty good progress so far. I'm pretty happy about it. I got through the isometric um, tile map and being able to move characters properly with the navigation is pretty amazing. The engine, it comes with the navigation logic, which could be pretty complicated. So that's pretty good plus.
Okay, well, end of third day. Have been making great progress so far. It's looking pretty good. So let me just show you real quick before I prepare myself to sleep for the day. I have the basic map setting going on, some UI and some functionality. So as you can see, um, there's this action bar, there's some skill ability. There's two things that can either attack or walk, the QW, and you can see there's a UI. For the attack, it's just a UI. I need to actually implement that. That's the next thing I need to do. But for walk, the way it works, um, right now the game is paused. It starts from paused mode, and then you click, and you can see the action bar. There's one for each. And once I start it by pressing space bar, so you notice the first thing it does is that it rolls the reaction. So what this represents is the player character's uh, reaction time. So it rolls between one and six. So that's the frame that it'll sit on. And the way it works is that once the frame, as it executes frame by frame, reaches the frame where the player's reaction marker is at, it'll pause without executing. So for example here, I, as a player, I have a choice to either change what I have queued up by canceling the current frame and forth, or I can continue. So here, let me just continue by pressing spacebar without changing anything. So it'll continue this path, right? You saw that. So once again here, my reaction ended up landing on the middle of the frame. So when it reached here, the last step, it's not executing, it's paused. So instead I can say, oh, I don't like this path, so I'm gonna change it. So you can see it cancels it on the next frame, it'll start moving, right? And then it diminishes. So same thing, um, something that I'm excited about doing that is the crux of this design is that some of the frames are not cancelable. So if you're on the execution of non-cancelable frame, instead of canceling like here the entire thing, it'll cancel only the portion after the locked frames. I'm trying to uh, mimic the feeling of uh, animation canceling during, you know, action RPG games or even high level MOBA games and fighting games. All those things are all about iframing and canceling animation. And I'm trying to give that experience to players and users that hasn't had the physical ability or expertise to master that. So it is now noon of Wednesday. In fact, I didn't skip the update. It's so annoying. You know, this happened on the second day as well. My mic setup is keep going out of whack and it's choosing different mics. So I didn't realize my mic wasn't connected. And I had the whole video recorded without any audio. And I was trying to figure out what I can do to kind of make up for it, but. I don't know if it seems like it's more trouble than worth. So I was going to say it is the next day since I would have a clip from behind and there was a bunch of updates and I don't even remember what I updated. So I'm just gonna show you the whole thing. Maybe this is for the better because uh, there's quite a bit of update now. So let me just show you this real quick. So here's the game. Um, and this is how it starts. Uh, I don't know, I don't even know how much I shared, but um, there's a range indicators limiting. And then once you select, it shows how many turns it'll take or how many frames it'll take to get um, execute those actions. And you can see a little move icon versus like this one, it'll move and attack at the same time, that spot. And uh, when I press space bar, it'll continue. Um, roll reaction, so I'll do space bar right now. Roll reaction, it reacted onto the maximum, so it waits. As you probably noticed, the AI also has a counter, so it's indicating that the AI will attack this spot in um, two frames. Well, it's a little confusing. I think it still need a little bit of work, but I'll show you what I mean. My thought here is that if I want to kill this guy, right, it'll count down to two, and on zero, it'll come here where I have three turns to attack. So that means I'll at attack right after the enemy arrives in this frame. So this is safe and I'll actually beat the guy. Bam, just like planned. 
So the enemy logic is pretty simple. It's just the AI will attack as much as it can um, to whatever available space, so it just hops around. One issue I did have um, is a readability. I have a lot of uh, numbers and markers indicating basically eventually you'll be able to figure out what's what. Only problem is this countdown could be confusing because let's say I only um, use one frame and then the reaction arrives one of these places. And this um, tick down happens very quickly and you're paying attention to this at the same time you're paying attention to the enemy or you're not like it's pretty unclear where your eye should be and part of me also wonders when i do this and then the like one frame and then the reaction lands at some empty spot if it should uh, fill the empty spot with the um no action frames at least to show that there are frames that occupy that space and it'll still tick down where you're doing nothing idly and that might increase uh, clarity actually maybe it might be good now i'm thinking about this maybe i need to number these frames like instead of being like blank maybe i should have zero one two three four five written here or six seven whatever to show um where these actions are actually located because right now here I'm, I'm i have to manually figure out what that means yeah i think that would be a good idea so anyways um long story short I got a lot done. There's actually damage calculation. There's actually AI logic. There's a full mechanics that you can perform. So some quality of life changes that I need to do to make it more understanding. Um, there are some important changes like numbering the frame that I think would be really helpful. Even though I have what, Thursday, Friday. So I have two more days to kind of complete at least that way so I can start working on the editing this video, <laughs> which before I need to go out of town. Let's see, what was I saying? I want to work on the game over, some new different levels, and then if I have time, add sound effects so that it has more impact. It is now 11.30 p.m. and I'm done. I have two levels on the games complete. I added some sounds. I was playing it. It's fairly challenging even though I know the rule. Only thing is I still have a little reserve about the kind of like the technical difficulty the game has. Yeah, all that's left is just getting some feedback. Let me show you how it plays. I mean, it's it's kind of difficult even for me. The demo, the demo actually get to play. So you can see here, I'm gonna just zoom in. Some frames, some level. It might be a little busy, the screen, but yeah, little nice little clicks. I like that satisfying sound. Um, so let's see. I'm having actually trouble. So there's only two levels to the game, and I'm having a slight bit of trouble. So I've added this thing. It's a spawner, so it shows in eight turns something will spawn there. Gameplay. Oh, here's a good example. So now you're in the middle of the attack frame. That's a cancelable frame. So if I can just attack, continue to attack, but change the direction. If, we're, if you're canceling your action to change to moving, instead of the movement starting on this frame, so frame number one, it starts at zero. So it, it's an immediate move. So it's just a, it's like a strategic, if you're reacting from a current action, if you're reacting from current action, it's like a strategic movement to back off and then try doing it again if you need to. Okay, um, actually, <laughs> one final update before I go. I got to work on it a little bit more. Um, I had one person play it and then gave a bunch of feedback and I noticed some stuff about the clarity and I had a bunch of more ideas and I had, you know, one more day before the weekend starts. So I thought maybe I could improve some stuff, different mechanics and balance updates and um, so that the play experience feels a little bit more strategic and also more fun. I, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of update on what that looks like right now. Okay, so here it is. Um, it's mostly the same. I'm gonna maximize this real quick. I added a few things. There's a, instead of randomly rolling the reaction, now the reaction is assigned and you can choose between second frame or the third frame. And then also I added this like indicator you can see on my attack. You can see the little icons down here indicating different effects. So this is a uh, redirection effect and then this is the um, empowered effect. So the way I was thinking was that now that you can 
control exactly how to um, like which frame to sit on before being able to assign your next uh, ability. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. That's what I thought. So here it is. So redirection is meant to be like, oh, immediately you get to change the direction of your current action or you can move out of the way immediately on that same turn. Um, so right now, let me show you on the second frame. So if I put reaction to the second frame, um, the game will progress until this frame hits zero. And then before executing this frame, it'll give you an option to um, put in Q in new command. And so here, let me just do this. All right, so now I'm on the redirection. So I can either use the same attack without canceling any of the ability or any of the attacks. I can just redirect it so I can still attack in one turn, but just change the direction. Or if I need to run away, I can run away and you notice that the execution turn is zero now, right? Instead of one, so you can move immediately, which is still the same. This, I think, I believe on my previous update, I might have included this, if not, whatever. Um, and then the next one, now I'm gonna make it freeze on the empower. So on empower, if I do attack, I can attack immediately as a follow-up. So you can do, if you decide to freeze on this frame, you can attack twice in a row. Well, not in a row, because this still needs to tick to zero, then it executes it. Or I can do it in power movement, and you can see it skips the closest. So on the next move, it moves two spots like this, instead of having to wait another frame, which normally would take two turns to get here. This feels much better. Yesterday's version actually had a feel of randomness. I couldn't really strategize properly. Um, there was something unsatisfying about it, but I'm really glad I made this change at the end of the day because it actually feels like a game now um, with some sort of actual <laughs> sanity and uh, logic behind it. And, you know, pre-challenging and it wasn't frustrating and didn't feel like I couldn't plan or if I lost the game, it didn't feel like it was completely random. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy about it. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say about it. And otherwise, what, you know, my friend will have to say um, once, they, once they play it. So it's, it's feeling pretty good. If you want to try the game, you can go to asthedev.itch.io slash duelist and you can play the game on browser and you have to use Chrome. So if you're using something else, sorry. And if you do try it, please leave a comment down below so I can get some feedback because I really want to continue working on it and make improvement on it. So any, any feedback helps. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.